Welcome to the session on inclusive voter information. And before we get to it, one announcement on Channel 2. You can listen to easy to understand English. So if you think that these speakers here will not be easy to understand English, you can tune on to Channel 2 and uh, listen there. My name is Milan Sverepa. I, I work at Inclusion Europe. Inclusion Europe is the European movement of people with intellectual disabilities, have members in 39 European countries. And uh, we've been ourselves working a lot recently on, on elections and on the right to vote. There are always some elections going on at national level, local level, regional. Uh, there will also be European election in May this year. That makes it extra important to us European organizations. And if you would like to learn more about what we've been up to, go to our website of Inclusion Europe and see videos of self-advocates talking about the importance of the right to vote and learn about examples of the work that our members and other organizations are doing. I'm hoping you're having a good time at this conference. Uh, we have a good lineup of speakers here today. And before we get to them, uh, like I'll say a couple of words of introduction to the topic of inclusive voter information. One of the speakers yesterday said, simply extending formal voting rights is not sufficient. Simply extending formal voting rights. It's quite an easy phrase to use for those all of us who have them. And I wonder who in this room doesn't have the right to vote or had to fight for the right to vote to get it back. In the European Union alone, this would be 500,000 people. Half a million people in the European Union are not allowed to vote. Six European countries denied people are the guardianship the right to vote completely. Eleven countries allow for judges or guardians to deny people the right to vote. And in ten European countries, people can vote freely. It is also not just about the right to vote. It is also the right to stand for election. Only eight European Union countries allow people under guardianship to stand for election. Seven countries allow judges and guardians to, de to deny this opportunity to people. And 12 European Union countries denied people completely when they put them under guardianship. As I said, it's 500,000 people in the European Union alone. And I am sure there are hundreds more, thousands more all around the world. And this is unacceptable, and this must change now. This perky yesterday, though, was arriving to a broader point about accessibility and barriers to voting. And in that respect, of course, she was right. There is more that needs to be done to support voter participation. And that is what we are here to talk about today. So let me welcome our speakers. And let me also make a great mess of pronouncing their names. They will share with you their work about election information, accessibility of elections, about engaging with voters with disabilities, about inclusive campaigns. We have here from Spain, Shell Stamon, Ula Boman, and Ilva Biela. From Scotland, still in the United Kingdom, Kaylee Thorpe. We'll have a video from Australia, Nathan Despot. From Spain, we have uh, Enrique Galvan and Antonio Hinojosa. And happy to welcome of also uh, Valburga Freilich from Austria. 
Welcome to all speakers and special welcome to Antonia because no session about people with intellectual disabilities should be held without people with intellectual disabilities contributing as speakers. Each speaker has nine minutes. And um, after all the presentations, we will make use of the graphic facilitation. So good morning to Petra. And she will uh, recall all the presentations after, after they were delivered. And that will help us all to remember what was being discussed and presented and, and move on to the questions. So if you have any questions during the presentations, write them down. So your time and the questions time will come towards the end of the session. And if you any, at any point think that the speakers are talking too fast, or that I talking in a language that you, is hard to follow, do something to make us aware of that. Throw a chair, raise a hand, or something like that. And we will try to uh, improve the situation here. OK, let's get on with things. And uh, I cannot hear, uh, I cannot wait to learn from what all of you have to say, and um, shall. How do you get this to work? Can we get some assistance on the PowerPoint side of things, please? Okay, uh, let's, let's, start. let's start with the PowerPoint and hopefully it will kick in at some stage. Okay, so, um, yeah, sure. We are trying to get this to work, but we'll have to do without it. Um, thank you. My name is Shell Juan Holm, and together with my two colleagues here, we're going to give you the, the project My Choice, My Election. Um, now, there are some major things we need to understand when looking at this project. The first thing would be the concept of non-formal adult popular education. That's the start of things, yes. Um, it's a very Swedish Scandinavian thing where the government gives annual support of about 130 million euros to 10 different NGOs to provide learning activities for the Swedish population. They can learn anything as long as it's voluntary and it promotes democracy, equal rights, and a few other values like that. The second thing to understand is that these NGOs in their turn have cooperations with different organizations and groups of people in Sweden. Uh, our uh, 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 NGO, Studieforbundet Vuxenskolan, has a very close alliance with people with intellectual disabilities and their organizations. And we've had that since, we, since Sweden started to tear down the institutions and decided that everyone, no matter disability, got the right to education. That was late 60s, early 70s. The third thing would be to understand that the main method of this adult popular education is the study circle. Now, the study circle is a bottom-up structure where the participant is in charge. So they are in charge of what to learn, how to learn, and in what order. So everyone is active, it's always small groups, and it's always process-oriented. So what about the voting rights then? Well, voting rights were given to this group in Sweden in 1989. But most people with intellectual disabilities still don't vote. We arranged a workshop together with people with intellectual disability to find out why. And they gave us heaps of reasons. But you could sort them into some major groups. Fear of doing mistakes, fear of being treated badly, and 
Also, that the political language and the political content was too hard to understand. So, our analysis was that it's no use to instruct on how to vote if you're not allowed to understand what we are voting about. The very politics had to be made accessible. Now, you remember the fundamentals of uh, the study circle? Uh, we decided that the study circle could be the answer to this and brought in an expert on EasyRead to help us construct method and study material. And that's Ulla Boman. Ulla, please. Thank you, Shell. My name is Ulla Boman and I'm an easy to read language expert. And I'm the author of the study circle material, My Choice, My Election. We designed a study circle that focused on learning together about democracy and what choices every citizen has. Talking about democracy raised questions, questions about things that are important to me in my daily life. And together we looked at the different political levels in Sweden and in the European Union and where the questions are decided upon. The leader of a study circle is a facilitator. The facilitator helps the participants to sort out where and how to get answers to the questions. We used newspapers in uh, easy to read Swedish and other resources. But many of our questions needed to be answered directly by politicians. And therefore, at the end of the study circle, we invited local politicians to discussions about all the important questions we had. Before the discussions, we trained the politicians to speak in an easy to understand way. And the discussions were great. It was direct communication and it was true empowerment. The participants were tough. They didn't let the politicians get away with any complicated or abstract answers. And afterwards, several of the politicians said that this was the most difficult political discussion they had ever experienced. Back to you, Shell. So, what was the turnout then? Well, last election, 2018, we had 109 study circles 650 participants and 50 easy to understand electoral discussions with more than 2,000 participants. And of those who participated in the study circle, more than 80% voted. That's in parallel with Swedish uh, populations. And politicians actually changed policies and behavior based upon these easy to understand political discussions. But not only locally. We also brought our campaign and our challenges to the national level, the government, the party leaders, and members of parliament. We just had feedback from the chairman of the National Inquiry on Democracy that this was a key factor in allowing a change to how the ballots in Swedish elections are formed. So now there is not only text allowed on them, but also the party logotypes, so it can be easier for voters to tell them apart. But we also had some negative feedback from the, uh, uh, sorry, from the uh, participants. One of them, Anna Hildingsson, went out to different local party organizations and asked for easy to read information on local policies. One of, the party, uh, one of the party's answers, no, we don't have that, but you can have a lollipop instead. We took that as ground for a new problem. The problem that there is always no, uh, almost no easy reading information available on local politics, only on national politics. So how can we encourage politicians to produce easy reading information about their local election promises? We decided the answer to this would be an online education, open and free for all politicians that so wanted to use it. And for this, we brought in another expert on easy read, Ulva Bielle. Ulva, please. Thank you, Chell. Yes, I'm the author of this course, Be an Easy to Read Politician. 
When I watch the news on television, I always do it with a notebook at hand. And when a politician is interviewed saying something difficult, difficult for no reason, I write it down. And now all those difficult sentences are in this course. The course contains 10 chapters. Each chapter starts with a video clip where I give my best advice on how to write and speak and explain in easy read. And when you take this course, you have to try on your own because every chapter has exercises. In the beginning, it's quite simple, separate sentences, but it gets tougher the more chapters you study. And on the screen, if you have good eyes, no one can see it, but there is an example from our former prime minister, Mr. Friedrich Reinfeldt, who once said, I understand that the citizens of Malmö want an end to the justice of coercion. Please, can you write that down in easy read? What did he say? And if you want some help, you can have a look on my advice in the course. I would prefer, I understand that the people who live in Malmö in the south of Sweden, I understand that they are tired of the violence. That would be more easy to understand. I think that many people have different languages. One language when they are interviewed on television, and another language when they speak to children or to people with intellectual disabilities. I want people and politicians to speak more in easy read even from start. If they do so, they can reach more voters. Since we decided not to register a participant on the online education to make it available to as many as possible, we don't really know how many that used it. But we do know from those who connected to us again that those who used it are very satisfied with content and method. Our challenge doesn't stop here. Uh, we keep on working with the political parties and the politicians to use the course and produce easy read information on local policies. We are happy to learn from others. We're happy to share what we have learned and we're happy to cooperate with anyone that wants to develop this area. Please just let us know. And uh, we also have more material and folders for you to bring back on the Access Israel Trail exhibition. We're a part of that. Please join us there and have a further look. Thank you. Thank you. Apparently, this will be an easy job for me. It will be perfect on the time. Uh, so uh, thank you very much. And let's move on and hear it from Kaylee. Hello everyone, I'm Kayleigh Thorpe and I'm the Head of Campaigns, Policy and Activism at Enable Scotland. Now to say that in easy read, it is my job to work with our members to change things, to campaign and to have a voice together. Enable Scotland is the leading organisation working towards an equal society for every person who has a learning disability in Scotland. We were founded 65 years ago by families who believed that their children had the same rights as everyone else. We've come a long way since then, but there is still much to improve. As a member-led campaigning charity, we are led by our members, many of whom come together as ACE. ACE is an active community of empowered people who have learning disabilities. ACE has been part of Enable Scotland for 25 years. There are more than 30 ACE groups across Scotland meeting in communities every month and coming together four times a year. Central to our shared vision with ACE is people who have learning disabilities having a local and national voice, themselves being a catalyst for change. Democratic participation, using your right to vote, is a fundamental part of having your voice for change and having your voice heard. Yet too many people who have learning disabilities face barriers to exercising that right. The process of registering to vote is hard and it's not always easy to understand. Some people think that people who have learning disabilities are not allowed to vote 
And whilst this is not the case in the UK, this still prevents many people from using their right. Most information, as we've heard, from political parties is hard to understand. This can prevent informed decision making and confidence in using your vote. Even when we come, overcome all of this, we still face challenges like snap elections, which don't give enough time to make things accessible and support informed decision making. Through Enable the Vote, Enable Scotland set out to make the voting process and politicians much more accessible to people who have learning disabilities. Enable the Vote worked across the political spectrum in Scotland, empowering people who have a learning disability to have their say, to influence the debate on issues that matter to them, to make informed choices about who gets their vote, and ultimately to increase the number of people who have learning disabilities exercising their right to vote. We did this in various ways. We did this by writing accessible information about the election process. We worked in partnership with the Electoral Commission for Scotland to write easy read guides, a photo walkthrough, and guides for families, carers, and professionals to enable and facilitate voting. These guides serve two purposes, guiding people who have learning disabilities, their families and supporters through the process of registering to vote and voting. But they also, due to the Electoral Commission's backing and logo, provided a form of self-advocacy tool, enabling people who have learning disabilities to challenge any misconceptions about their right to vote. Together with our members, we also campaigned for all political parties to create easy read manifestos, as many had not up until that point. And this is where people find out what a political party and politician stands for. So it's essential that we have easy to understand information for people who have learning disabilities and the wider population. We also held voting workshops across our ACE network. And similar to, to the study circles described, these, these explored themes around voting, why we vote. We had many elections in our, in our own ACE groups um, and people chose who got their vote based on what was said. We also talked through the process of voting and how to register to vote. As part of these workshops, people who have learning disabilities created their own manifestos for change capturing the most important issues for them and the changes they want to see, gathering evidence and also finding the solution so they were calling for specific changes. We organised events across Scotland where people who have a learning disability met with their local politicians. We used a conversation cafe set up rather than a traditional debate format. This meant that people had the chance to talk to each representative in turn rather than politicians debating amongst themselves and slipping into not easy to understand language. And the result, oh, press this button again. And the result more than 80% of people who engaged in Enable the Vote used their vote in the Scottish parliamentary elections in 2016. 91% went on to use their vote in the local council elections in 2017. And four out of the five main political parties made easy read manifestos for the first time. We also know that at least one political group adopted our model for meetings rather than their, their traditional setup and to make their own meetings more accessible for all their members. We also know of a, a person who attended um, our hustings, taking, taking it forward one more step and actually standing for selection themselves for their own local party of choice. These are more than marginal gains and we look forward to improving further as we head towards the next election and the next one and the next one. And I just have a quote there from John who um, took part in our hustings event and he said, no one had ever talked to me about voting before learning more about elections, more about my rights. It has helped me to feel more empowered to really take control of my right to vote, to question politicians seeking my vote and make sure that when I mark that paper, I'm putting my point of view across. 
All of this was possible thanks to funding for our ACE network from the Scottish Government. Enable Scotland's work with ACE is supported by the Adult Learning and Empowering Communities Fund. Our partnership with the Electoral Commission for Scotland was also crucial to the success of Enable the Vote. Their logo gave our information and work legitimacy and our partnership helped them reach a whole new audience of voters. So what's next? Enable Scotland will continue to enable the vote at each election. We have a model that works and we are delighted to be here sharing it today. Beyond that, through Enable the Vote, our ACE network has become more politically aware and more politically active. Since then, members have spoke up in both the UK and in the Scottish Parliament. They continue to inform and change public policy and hold their representatives to account. That is the legacy of Enable the Vote and long may it continue. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, been a couple of interesting examples of the good, good practices and now we are going to learn about another one which is from Australia and uh, via a pre-recorded video. Okay, so I was sad that I don't have to do anything after I introduce the video and it will start to play, so I'm hoping that's going to happen. And the body of the organizers. Okay, we are ready. Thank you. My name is Nathan Despot. I'm the manager of Inclusion Design Lab a leading research and development body in Melbourne, Australia. Our umbrella organisation, Inclusion Melbourne, is the longest serving disability provider in the state of Victoria. In recent years, our work has included access to dental care, access to the justice support system, LGBTIQ inclusion and self-advocacy, and circles of support and microboards. We've found that engagement with full citizenship is still somewhat embryonic in the Australian disability support sector. Organisations have improved greatly in supporting social and community inclusion, engaging with advocates and promoting physical or cognitive access. However, what about political citizenship, voting, equitable access to the justice system, supported decision making, equitable access to the market, and of most concern to the work of our LGBTIQ project, self-advocacy and gender and sexual identity. The model on the slide reflects our current practical view of supporting citizenship. The United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, the CRPD, outlines engagement in civic and political life in Article 29. However, the necessary components of political inclusion can be found in articles relating to political education, physical access during elections, access to political information, and participation in cultural life. People with intellectual disability have a right to be political party members, get involved in unions, contribute to broad policy domains, and to be supported to do so. Voting is compulsory in Australia. However, a very old piece of legislation allows voters with intellectual disability to be excluded if specific third parties deem them unable to understand the nature and significance of voting. Inclusion Design Lab began investigating the experiences of voters with intellectual disability in Australia roughly six years ago. As we engaged support professionals locally, we came across a range of perceived risks. You can see some of them on the slide. For example, many support workers held the assumption that people with intellectual disability cannot understand government or politics. We also found that many of the practice models already present in the support sector and employed even by our own organisation contained techniques and principles that could be applied to supporting people with disability to prepare for elections and vote. 
Some of these practice models are already known to many of you here, including person-centred active support and supported decision-making. British and American research has found that several factors often prevent supporters, including natural, informal and paid supporters, from aiding the process of preparing for elections, such as a lack of specific practice steps available to them in their training, discretion and assumptions, a lack of group support, and often a lack of accessible political information. We also learned that while electoral commissions can produce generic, easy language information about voting, they may not always be able to transmit partial or partisan political information, such as easy language translated party policies. In Australia, most easy language material produced by electoral commissions simply outlines generic information about enrolment and how to vote at the ballot box. From a broad base of literature and with support from La Trobe University, we assembled a taxonomy of political citizenship and participation and then applied it to the voting context mapped against the CRPD. We then received a Victorian government scholarship to travel around the world to see what inclusive voting campaigns looked like in sites of best practice. Sure enough, we discovered that support practice, self-advocacy, and an inclusive political culture were just as, if not more important, in empowering voters with intellectual disability. We were inspired by the work of Shelberg and Hemmingsen and their research in Sweden into social networks and small group discussions in building political knowledge. We were also inspired by the Mittvoll campaign in Sweden and its group learning model for political education, as well as United Response's tremendous Easy News and Every Vote Counts campaign in the UK. And the Disability Matters Manitoba project in Canada, which saw politicians create easy language videos in the lead up to the 2016 provincial election. We mapped these campaigns against our taxonomy, then applied for philanthropic grants to develop our own campaign based on our research, with the hope of combining all of the elements across all stages of our taxonomy. We called our campaign, I Can Vote, a online portal launched just before the 2018 Victorian state election. We worked with our self-advocates to create video stories of several voters with intellectual disability and acquired brain injury and created an online easy language guide to politics and enrolment called I Can Vote. We partnered with videographers YouthWorks and Channel 31 in Melbourne, easy language organisations Scope, Access Easy English and Information Access Group and web developer Scott Sanders from Creative Freedom to create a system that would allow political candidates to log onto the portal, upload their script and have the script sent to a translator for a small cost. The script would be translated, approved and then forwarded automatically to videographers for filming. Several local candidates and party leaders produced easy language videos using the portal. Just before the election, thousands of voters used the portal's search tool to access videos from the parties and candidates from their local electorate. Social media reach was almost 100,000. The I Can Vote portal also contains practice and planning materials for supporters, including our Plan to Vote, a guide that allows supporters and people with intellectual disability to develop a six-month plan outlining everything that the person is going to do as they learn about politics, prepare for the election, and learn about the political candidates. Our next step is the 2019 Australian federal election in the middle of the year. Inclusion Design Lab is currently preparing the I Can Vote portal for use by organisations in other states and countries. The I Can Vote team Inclusion Melbourne, Inclusion Design Lab and our partners, thank you for your generous recognition of our work to further electoral inclusion in Australia and globally. Uh, thank you once more. It was easy to match the timings here as well. 
And let's move on to the speakers uh, from Spain, uh, Enrique and Antonio. Hello, how are you? My name is Antonio. Hola a todos. Mi nombre es Enrique. It's great to be here today. Plena Inclusión is the main organization of people with intellectual and developmental disability in their families in Spain. Since 2011, we have been developing My, Mi Voto Cuenta, a campaign to raise people's awareness of the right to vote. People, people with intellectual disabilities or participation in the campaign from the beginning or the spreading all matches and the or talking with politicians and journalists about their claim. In this campaign, we talk to politicians about how to assure the right to vote and political participation of people with disability and how to make his process completely accessible. Electoral tables, political programs and messages, guides for participate in the tables, etc. We, we also prepare and teach people with disabilities about importance of the, this right and hope to take part in this demand. Also, we tell them about voting process. And also, we make some action for common citizens to be aware of and understand the situation of the people with intellectual disability. The fact that everyone has the right to vote and must vote with all guarantees. For example, having a seat to understand information about the whole voting process. The campaign has achieved some very important things almost all of the main political parties main, make exit to read programs. A few months ago, Plain Inclusion Spain has been the catalyst in achieving and change in the electoral law. Now all people with disabilities have the right to vote. In Spain, we had more than 100,000 people who denied the vote because of legal procedures. Now we have more and more of these people demanding their own rights, the sense of, and that is very important. They and their families are holding demonstration for their rights. They are meeting politicians. They are also reviewing the electoral process to, easy, to understand for all people. The organization member of Plain Inclusion are supporting people with intellectual disability and their families in this endeavor. This year in Spain, we have a, a European, national, regional, and local elections with thousands of the new voters. We want all the official information to be easily accessible to everyone. Also, we want to pray, uh, prepare new voters with intellectual disability to know about politics, to choose who they want to vote for, and to know how to vote with easy to read tools and the support of the new technologies, like a tempo did the version to easy read about our presentation. Thank you very much. We will to lie to sense inclusion Europe and inclusion international 
for giving our support. Thank you very much to Zero Project and all of you for listening. You can, okay. You can see in our web the project. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you both. And I think that uh, there should be another round of applause for the, for the Spanish state and for Spain on giving the right to vote back to 100,000 people. So, Valburga. Thank you. So, election campaign periods don't last very long. There is a plenty of time between two periods, often up to five years. Usually, a voting campaign starts about six months before an election, and that's when politicians, NGOs, and lobbying groups request accessibility, accessible information for voters with disabilities, accessible election. That is good, because the more accessible and easy comprehensible information is available, the better it is for all of us. So how do voters get information? Voters get different kinds of information. They get brochures in their post box. They see posters all over the city, live discussions on TV or radio, and of course, various kinds of information on social networks, such as Facebook or Twitter. Still, it is information made to influence the voters' opinion. So actually, we all should read as much as we can so that we see the differences and learn to build up well-informed preferences. Especially websites and brochures have more and more easy-to-read versions. I'm very sure that not only readers with disabilities benefit from this easy-to-read information, but the majority of easy-to-read information for people with learning difficulties deals with information about the Electoral Act and electoral procedure itself, about the right to vote or to be elected. Much less information is available about the attitude of individual parties or party representatives to important social issues. So how do people with learning difficulties get information about the daily political proposals? and the daily politician decisions of the parties. They are actually much more important because it is not only about people with learning difficulties being able to vote, but also about being able to make informed decisions whom they want to vote. Voters' information on Facebook and Twitter tend to be easier to understand than other voter information because one has to keep the message short and easy for these social media channels. Just think, think about Donald Trump on Twitter. But the problem about the information on Facebook, Twitter and co is, it's not news. The information is always the author's very personal point of view. That has nothing to do with balanced and well-researched news. But still, it looks like very credible and for us, it is often hard to see the difference between opinion and news, especially for those of us who have problems with reading texts. So still, there is a big lack of information between two election campaign periods. Actually, information in these periods should be much more important for voters. This information shows what the voted politicians really do and not what they promised to do during the election campaign. So what do we make out of this information? Everyone creates 
information bubbles. Reading and understanding only that kind of information that matches our special interest. We read what we like to read, but we like to understand. Therefore, besides special voting information, we should focus on inclusive daily information, on easy comprehensible and easy accessible daily news for everybody. Daily news which do not manipulate people, which are not fake, and which do not hide or overstate what's going on around the world. The most effective way to well-informed voters, no matter if they are disabled or not, are easy, accessible, and comprehensible daily news. Because daily news, daily information, is the base for people's general orientation. It is the base that allows us to rate and range all the information politicians send out in election campaigns. Daily news help to become immune to fake news and voters' manipulation. They help to build a base for well-informed decisions. This is one example for daily news in a comprehensible way in Austria. And when we started this service, we had 30,000 users. And now we have 1 million users for this daily news. These are 12% of the Austrian population, much more than people with learning difficulties. But we should go on. Every topic and every lobbying interest should be translated into easy to read information, not only specific disability topics, and not only as a specific disability service. People with learning difficulties and disabilities should be allowed to know and understand which issues other groups lobby in our society, not only the activities on their own groups. Otherwise, they will remain in their own little bubble. And this is, from my point of view, the meaning of inclusive voter information. Every day, every topic, for every person and not only during election battles. Thank you. Thank you. I think it has been my easiest job as a chair of anything ever. I didn't have to chase anybody's time or anything. Thank you very much for that, too. We'll now have the uh, graphic facilitation a reminder of each of the presentations, and after that, um, you, the audience, will get your chance to ask questions or, or raise your comments about the topic. I have to move uh, to the camera. Hello. Shall I stay here? Okay. <sighs> One of my favorite topics, I must admit. <laughs> Inclusive voter information. Um, maybe, I'm sorry, I'll just move the uh, camera. Can you follow me so that we, we don't have a head in the picture? Can you follow me? Nah, we still have heads in the picture. Okay, now we go. Uh, I'm sorry for the chair you have and, and the podium. You'll have to turn around to see the pictures, but you can come here later. Ah, thanks. Better. Um, it's bigger now, easy. Okay, so inclusive voter information. Um, before it started, Milan pointed out that from the perspective of Inclusion Europe, there, all around the world and also in Europe, there are still people um, are banned from voting. So of course, one thing is to give the right to vote back to people who don't have the right to vote. Um, in center of our today's discussion is to make voting easier uh, for people with learning disabilities. I always abbreviate it with LD, if that's okay with you. I know there is different abbreviations. Um, it's also, it's not only about voting and the right to vote, it's also the right to stand for vote, to stand up and say, okay, I'm a person with learning disabilities, but I have a right to be voted for, so I can be a candidate. And it's also about the right to understand the information when it comes to voting. 
So this was the whole summary of all the pre uh, presentations. Um, please follow me to this corner again. <laughs> Thank you. And a little bit down. Yes. OK. Now, the first example uh, was from Sweden, a project called My Choice, My Election. And one of the problems um, in Sweden is not that people don't have the right to vote, because they do, but it's um, lack of education and especially education on political participation. So one of the solutions is to bring more education, understandable education to people with learning disabilities. Um, and if that happens, we still have the problem that people with learning disabilities still don't vote because they're afraid, afraid to make mistakes or being treated badly. And from personal experience, I see that with people in, in I guess, all over Europe, yeah? being afraid, what am I supposed to do there? So it is also about teaching people on don't be afraid. Um, so the solution was, it's not only about learning how to vote, but also to understand what I am voting for. So your project is actually focusing on understanding what am I waiting, well, voting for? Yeah. <laughs> not only waiting, but also voting for. Um, who is this politician? Who are these parties we're talking about? So you did this project to inform and educate voters um, by study circles. And in these study circles, it was all about how to vote and whom to vote for and why. Um, also by direct contact with politicians. And I put here this wow thingy, saying that some of the politicians were really impressed by this direct contact, if I understand it correctly. So there were local meetings with politicians and direct talk to those people. And it led into understandable information for people with learning disabilities, but actually also politicians now are learning to make easier campaigns and to speak so that people actually understand what they're saying. Yeah, you gave us a really good example, and I think that's not only for people with learning disabilities to have this easier to understand language. So that was one good example from Sweden. That led directly um, to Scotland, where we have similar challenges. Also, the right to vote is not the topic, but being able to vote is the topic, right? So you came up with the project called Enable the Vote. Um, and the result was that 80% actually went, went to give their voice and to vote. How did you do that? Again, in easy to understand information, but also guiding people with learning disabilities. Overall, to tell them, you are allowed to vote, you have the right, and this is how you do it. Yeah? So you gave them instructions and support to learn that. For instance, by workshops, but also, again, meetings all across Scotland with local politicians, and maybe you can tell us in direct conversation how that differed from the uh, meetings in Sweden. Probably you did some tricks and tips um, but overall, it was very similar. You went throughout the country and people met. OK, um, let's continue. In, uh, we had this uh, video from Australia. Quickly, again, it's all about model of political citizenship. So that was the uh, special part in Australia, Ma meaning that if I want to be a citizen, there's a lot of things I need. It's voting, it's having the right to vote, it's being able to understand. And from what I got was that teaching the supporters is, is necessary, so that the supporters don't say, well, you can't vote. Yeah? So um, in Australia, we saw that politicians now have a video-based translation for what they want to say on uh, the website called I Can Vote. And then videos are being translated into easier language from these politicians. In Spain, my vote counts. Um, I think the biggest thing we heard is that the right to vote has been given back to about 100,000 people. That is a big issue. And from your presentation, I found it interesting that you said you involve people with learning disabilities in the campaigns from start to finish 
in order to create accessible voting for everyone. And this was done by easy to understand language, uh, material printed, and also using new technology. And you're also teaching the common citizens to understand the necessity of people with learning disabilities to vote. And again, also the politicians are involved, right? Okay, last but not least, um, we heard that, yes, giving the information on how to vote and whom to vote for in the campaign periods is really important. But what do we see that between the campaigns, we sometimes have five years of where the politicians actually do their work. And Capito, um, the Capito app is giving us daily information, easy to read, so that I can become an informed citizen, um, whether I have a diffi uh, learning difficulty or not, so that I know, okay, what are those politician politicians doing on a daily basis? Um, and why am I supposed to vote for them when it comes to elections? So this, there's a bit of a difference from what we heard before, is that it's in between the elections, we give easy to understand new daily news so people can make their own opinion and they jump out of their information bubble. And I hope that was a summary of everything. Maybe the camera can show the whole picture once again so you can use that for your discussion. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Petra, for helping us to reconnect with all the presentations. I think if there is uh, one conclusion I think we can draw from all of what you were saying is that uh, information that is easier to understand about politics and uh, engaging with people in politics, with politicians and between people, um, helps um, voter participation, brings more opportunity. It also shows that there is desire from people without disabilities to get this information, this sort of engagement. And I mean, da. And I hope to live long enough to see the European Parliament put out easy to read information about itself and about the European elections, since they like to cry so much about voters not being interested. Uh, now is your time to pose your questions or comments. So, do I see any hands? Anyone interesting to ask our great panel of speakers. I will train my great side and... Okay. okay, I see a gentleman there in the middle. Does anybody... Hello. Okay, before I let you to ask your question though, I have a question for you. What is the speed of light? I do not know. You don't, you don't know, you don't get to ask the question. Uh, uh, no, I'm slightly joking. This is a question that a person in Spain was asked during the review of their right to vote. Okay, so your question, please. Thank you very much. I had an election management body in, in Canada the, uh, the, for the province of Saskatchewan. And uh, Nathan, uh, during his presentation, he's not here, but he mentioned the challenge of election management bodies not being able to enter into the political information side of the equation, but focusing on the vote itself, the process, the who, the what, and the where, and the when. And I'm wondering if uh, our panelists could, uh, could describe, uh, especially uh, Ms. Thorpe and, and those of you from Sweden, uh, whether you had challenges in that regard with the commissions that you dealt with, whether that's the Electoral Commission or the Commission in Sweden, um, whether you saw that problem and how you addressed it in that context. <clears throat> Upon um, the elections in Sweden are monitored by the parties. Uh, we connected with the chairman of the Swedish parliament and got the advice to set up meetings with all the party secretaries to have them uh, be informed about the project and be able to put input into it if they wanted to. Now, uh, if I understand your question right, 
uh, it would be the hard thing to have someone um, um, teaching politics to voters because that could be misused, right? Is that your question? Now, that's why the study circle is such a good method, because what we are doing is we are not having a teacher. We're having a facilitator that connects the voter to the politicians or to other sources. That's, that's the main thing of, of doing it. And also, by having a study circle that is for 20, 25, 30 hours, uh, right, it be not, does not become a time-efficient way of manipulating the election. So uh, it becomes a no issue in that sense. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I hope I answered your question correctly in that sense. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of, fr from my perspective, from um, the Scottish experience, um, our electoral commission ha is an impartial body and must remain an impartial body in terms of the elections, so will not be involved in writing party-specific policy information, so will stick to the voting process. Um, the way we overcame that was to go direct to the political parties. Um, and our members, the people who have learned disabilities themselves, wrote to and met with the leaders of political parties and asked them to make a commitment ahead of the election that they would produce an easy read manifesto. Um, I do think what is, what, is, what is missing is somebody to, to hold that, that as a requirement and, and to, could, because we still only achieve four out of five of the main political parties um, producing that. Um, but it is a requirement. Um, certainly, we, we have the Disability Discrimination Act, and if someone requires reasonable adjustments, then they, they should be provided. So um, perhaps there's, there's some legal test case that, that we, could, we could pursue, um, but I'm not sure what the body would be that would, that would hold them to account on that. So just to be clear, in Scotland, you were funded by the Electoral Commission. You were not funded by the Electoral Commission? No, nope, we just worked in partnership with them. Um, they paid some of the costs in terms of the, the brochures that we produced, the, the easy read guides. They paid for the cost of the print and distribution, but they did not fund our work. We, we are already funded, part of our work is already funded by the Scottish Government for adult learning and empowerment. So we, we used what we were already being funded to do to, to take this work forward and met the rest of the costs by fundraising and, and, and just through our, our core provision. Thank you. Thank you. More questions? Okay. I have a question for you too. Can you tell me what is the latest constitutional change in your country, please? This is an example from Hungary. Well, we, we are from Brazil. And I have a question is about accessibility towards another disabilities besides intellectual one. My question is to is Chisholm, is it? Yes. In your program of training online, it's about it. Does your program has Accessibility, accessibility to people who are deaf and blind at the same time? Um, when uh, this adult popular education uh, started to work with people with disability uh, in, in the 70s, uh, there was a call for, for the NGOs that want to do this. And there were two organizations that did that. Uh, and we focused on people with intellectual and psychiatric disabilities and our colleagues, uh, another NGO, focused on people with uh, moving impairments, hearing and, and visual impairments. So no, we are, not, uh, we are not having that because our colleagues are, are trying to do that. Uh, um, so, so this is a focus directly. But the Swedish government is. So uh, for example, this last election, there were no longer any excuses for, uh, for the election, uh, what do you call it, the venues, right? Uh, to be inaccessible. So, so there are, but there are criticism to the Swedish voting system, for example, by the visually impaired, who would prefer a digital voting and thereby allowing them to vote with privacy. 
in a sense that they cannot do now. They need assistance. Uh, and, uh, and that is yet not solved. The Swedish government prefers still analog voting for several reasons, but so that is still an issue. Yeah, at the back of the room. Hi, good morning. Um, quick question. When you translate to the easy read, how do you ensure you don't lose a lot of the nuance that comes in politics and people really understand what the impact of their vote be, would be? Like if you, and if you translate to something simpler, where like as a party we're for or against uh, nuclear reactors, which has large implications, how do you translate that into easy read? Hello. Yeah, when I do translations into easy read, I normally let my uppdragsgivare, my, uh, my client, read it and uh, accept it or propose any further explanation. So I do my version and I put it back to my client. Are you satisfied? Would you like me to explain more about this or that? And it's a dialogue. In, uh, often we often point to other documents, maybe to a film that is good for explaining something. But we start with an easy read version. I talk to my client, would you like further explanation? We add it, it's a discussion. And we let people with intellectual disabilities or someone else read it to say, is it easy enough? Valborga, would you like to add to that? So uh, um, within the top easy service, it is done in uh, follow. We have a criteria catalog, which um, in, has about 100 criteria about uh, what makes uh, information accessible and co easy comprehensible. This is the one side. And the other side is that we work with proof groups. So every information we um, uh, make these, which we simplify or translate from original in easy to read uh, version is um, there we, give, we, we get feedback from the proof group. But this service, Top Easy, is not done by pedagogical staff or by us. We have trained journalists from the Austria Press Agency. We have trained them for half a year, six months. And we uh, uh, analyzed every day their um, articles and their news and gave them feedback. And after this half year, they were able to do this daily news service by themselves. And Capito does only the proof group work. And Capito provides the technology of the app. But the Austro Press Agency journalists, they are able to provide daily news in free language levels, in an um, original version, in level A2, so it's uh, easy to read, and in level B1, it's something like um, plain language. Okay. Uh, we have um, the network uh, around all of Spain, the service of accessibility, accessibility, cognitive, and translate to read. I think the best indicator to is a, a good um, good tool is the the demand. No? We have improved the demand to to translate different areas: the justice, no, and education, and political participation uh, is. Um, the fiability to results, the use, and the demanding. Okay. Um, oops, sorry, I think that was enough on this question to give room for a last one. Anyone? Okay, thank you. And I have a question for you as well. I steal a little bit from the political participation, but could you tell me what is love? <laughs> That's question from Slovakia. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, I really liked all the presentations that we made. Um, I like that information is being made, is being put out there for persons with disability, which is easy to read and understand. And I can already see how it not only benefits persons with disability, but everybody else who finds it difficult to understand political processes and election processes. And coming from Southern Africa, I see 
um, how that is possible, you know, to share information with persons with disability. However, what I did not understand in your presentation is the extent to which your programs have been a part of the election planning and execution with election commissions and government at national level. And I would also like to know what you would consider the most difficult um, um, aspect of making elections accessible at a national level. Okay, let's have everyone briefly just how was the, elect the official authorities involved in your work, okay? Let's start with Sweden. Uh, the uh, development of our method was financed by the inheritance fund that is uh, 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 administered by the national government or, or, or one of our, our uh, departments there. Uh, but then after that, uh, the government has not been uh, financing our project, unfortunately, because it's their responsibility. So to be able to uphold this and to produce the online education for Easy Read, uh, our NGO has simply put up the money themselves. Uh, to do that, but that's not a sustainable solution. So we need to work on our, uh, uh, but also I should say the city, the municipalities have all, all chipped in and, and helped. That's the financial side, is that the answer? Okay. Um, I think I've said a, a little bit about how we've been supported. So we have been part funded by the Scottish government to take forward some of this work. Um, and we worked in partnership with the, the electoral commission body. Um, but even being here today and, and hearing about some of the other pieces of work that are, are happening in other countries, I, I think there is so much more that, that we could do, um, and I, I hope to, to see that continue and take some of that home. The, the funding is, is important, but now in Spain, we are trying to introduce in the law the accessibility cognitive, uh, how uh, part of universita, universal, universal accessibility. It's important for us because uh, when the law recognizes the ac uh, accessibility cognitive, I, uh, oh, we can to demand the, um, the impact in the uh, voting process and, and other things and other areas. So for this uh, daily news service, the Ministry for Social Affairs is funding it, but also the newspapers, the Austrian newspapers which are using it pay for this service and also the Austrian broadcasting station. So they pay for this service because it is a service uh, to reach much more people than before. Thank you. Thank you for all the questions. Thank you, panelists, for such great examples of work that helps people to make decisions about the future of their cities and countries uh, or the European Union or other parts of the world. Uh, I would encourage everyone to, of course, use them because voting matters, your vote matters, as does your support to others to vote. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the conference.